here now. We're ready to roll. Oh, really? Okay, well, we'll see you when you get here. Well, there you go. The day hasn't even started yet, and already things aren't going to plan. I'm here with a couple of hot hatches ready to do a comparo, and that was Toby on the phone. He says he wants to come along, and he's bringing a friend. So I suppose we wait. But while we do, let's have a quick introduction to the two cars behind me. On this side, Volkswagen Golf GTI. You'll remember from last year it was Drive's Performance Car of the Year, under 40 grand. Over this side, the Pretender to the Crown, the new Honda Civic Type R. I went to Scotland earlier in the year to test drive it, and I've got to say, I can't wait to get behind the wheel again. But I have to wait for Toby. So we wait. Please. That's not a friend, that's a WRX. Tobes, what are you doing, mate? <laughs> I figure you're doing a hot hatch comparo, yeah? Yes, I am. So why wouldn't you have the King, the Subaru WRX in there? Mate, the way I see it, that and these are two very different markets. This is a sophisticated clientele. Hang that on, thing's hang on. for Ram Raiders. <laughs> Come on. How much are these two? $39,990. And shock? $39,990. Right. $39,990, mate, exactly the same price. Let's figure out the best 40 grand hot hatch. I still don't think it's fair. You've got all wheel drive, I've got two front drivers. There are no similarities here. There are, 40 grand hot hatch. Stop your whinging, you take the red team, I'll be blue. Fine, you're on, <laughs> mate, you're on. Despite Glenn's whinging, even he has to admit that these cars are competitors. After all, they're all exactly the same price and they're all trying to add a little bit of spice to an existing small car. For the Subaru WRX, the advantage is clearly its two and a half litre turbocharged engine and its all wheel drive traction system. Perfect for when the weather's a bit iffy like it is today. It also has the name when it comes to reputation and experience in the pocket rocket market. The Honda on the other hand is all about a manic high revving engine. It gets to more than 8,000 RPM. It's also got no compromise suspension which is tailor made for back roads or for the racetrack. And as for the Volkswagen Golf GTI, well we didn't award it our sub $60,000 performance car for nothing. The GTI is also the only one here available with an auto transmission. Plus it looks a little bit less leery than the other two, so you shouldn't attract too much of the wrong sort of attention. So with our trio in tow, it's time to take a closer look at each of our $40,000 performance stars. When it comes to acceleration off the line, the WRX has one hell of a weapon. It's called all-wheel drive. That means there's almost no chance of wheel spin, even if it's a little bit damp like today. And we're already doing 100. Subaru claims 5.8 seconds. Got to be honest though, you wouldn't be launching it off the line like that if this was your own car, or at least not regularly, because quite frankly, that's pretty hard on the clutch. Now when it comes to getting this Golf off the line, it's child's play. We've got two pedals, two feet, too easy. All right then, load it up and go. Bit of wheel spin, a lot of wheel spin. 50, 60, second gear, 70, 80, third gear, 100. Now in stark contrast to the Golf, to get the Civic Type R off the line, you not only need a degree in thermal dynamics, but also a master's in astrophysics. It's a very peaky engine and it really needs revs to give its best. But we'll give it a go, eh? Righto. Three and a half, four thousand revs, and away we go. Four grand, not too bad. 40, 50, second gear, slam. 80, ninth, third gear to 100. Yeah, it doesn't feel as quick as the Golf to me, and it needs that extra gear change to reach a ton. Three things I really like about the Civic Type R. The engine. When it is on the revs, it sounds delirious. The steering, it is inch perfect and you can almost feel the road ahead through your fingers. And the third is the gear shift. It's like a rifle bolt, it's just snick snick. But three things I don't like about this car, 
when you're on the commute from home to the road, it is really hard work to live with. Second, the suspension. It is firm. I mean, really firm. I mean, look at the way the camera's bouncing around all over the place. And the third thing, well, it's kind of a love-hate. I love the look, but I hate the way the look makes everybody else look at it as well. Sometimes you just want to go under the radar and you're never going to do that in this car. Ah yes, the Volkswagen Golf GTI, I'm very fond of this car. I mean it really is the consummate professional. You know, it's a comfortable car to cruise in, the drivetrain's very relaxed, but when you get on the twisty roads like we are now, it can really show you a clean set of heels. Now I'm a big fan of this engine and the DSG gearbox when you're moving. When you're in stop-start city traffic, the DSG is not convincing. But out here, it is in its element. In fact, the whole GTI is in its element. This car, when you think about it, is the ultimate all-rounder. It'll happily live with you during the week, and it'll take you to heaven on the weekends. You've only got to look at it to realise the WRX really has come a long way. It's a very different beast to the original one and it fits much better into this sort of company. It's also the most powerful car here, 169 kilowatts and a full 320 newton meters. So yes, the engine loves a rev, but perhaps one of the best things is how it works in higher gears. Like here I am in top gear and it still accelerates well, 70 k's now onto 80 then on to 90, it's pulling quite strongly. But there is a catch, this. Only five gears, five gears. Come on Subaru, the game's moved on. Everything else has got six in this class. Inside, if you can ignore these little pimples hanging off the pillars here, well, it's a fairly formal looking place. It's not particularly sporty, but it's functional and gets on with the job. And of course, one of the best things with the Rex is that all wheel drive system. Simplicity at its finest. Whatever corner you're coming out of, just floor it, and it sort of claws its way out. It's like a cat climbing up a couch. Well, WRXs have always been a little bit full-on, a little bit sporty, very bone-jarring in their ride, but this one's quite compliant, pretty easy to live with. In fact, I'd almost say it's a little bit too soft. It doesn't feel quite as sharp in its sensors, and even with the steering, just a bit too light, not where it should be. been a day of excitement trying to work out which is the best 40 grand hot hatch. Now, Glenn, it's your 40,000 bucks. Where are you going to spend it? Not there. I really wanted to like the Honda, and I do. It's an exhilarating car. It really gets your pulse racing. But it's too extroverted for me. The look, the ride, the That's engine. That's the look. Mate, look at the styling. Like, I actually don't mind that wedge-like shape, but that'll be out of date by the time you get it into the garage, I reckon. Yeah, they've really gone to town on it, but nobody wants to be that loud all of the time. But forget the Honda, we've written that off. Tell me about the Rex. I really want to know what you think. Okay. <laughs> when we came here, I was absolutely positive that this was going to wipe the floor of everything. It's the new version of a King, it's all new from the ground up, a new WRX. All-wheel drive, the most powerful car here. Pretty good specification levels, but I've got to be honest, I'm left a little bit cold. And I don't know what it is. It just feels a little bit underwhelming, a little bit not as exciting or exhilarating as it should be. Don't get me wrong, it's still a good professional car. It feels more upmarket, it feels more composed, but there's something missing. Which leaves us with one more car, the Volkswagen Golf GTI. Now, I've always loved this car. What do you reckon? I can't help it, mate. I really didn't want to love the car when we started. To me, it's a vanilla car, but I can't fault it. You know, I don't know, it's the performance, it's the cruising, it's the comfort, it's the practicality. It seems to just tick every box. Oh, I don't know if it ticks quite every box, but it certainly is the best car here, which, hey, is a shock. You had to be right once, so <laughs> I'll concede this. I would definitely go for the GDI, and that is our pick for the best $40,000 hot hatch. So, mate, end of a nice day's driving. Mm. You've had enough time in that, where are the keys? Hey, no, 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 you brought this. You can take it home. I'm taking the GDI. Oh. Shorty, you're in the Honda, bud.